Thanks for joining us for part three of our GED science course from ultimateged.com. Part three and part four will have most of our GED science calculations. Let's dive right in. Lesson nine, atomic theory, structure, and the periodic table. The table and the corresponding graph displays various properties of selected elements. The table lists the atomic number and number of protons of each element, while the graph displays the electronegativity values of the elements. Use these to answer the following questions. Question 34. Which of the statements below is true? A. The atomic number is equal to the number of electrons in the atom. B. The atomic number is equal to the number of neutrons in the atom. C. The atomic number is equal to the sum of the number of protons and neutrons in the atom. D. The atomic number is equal to the number of protons in the atom. Some GED science questions requires the use of multiple data points, like two graphs or a graph and a table combined to get your answers. That's what we are looking at here. The correct answer is D. The atomic number is equal to the number of protons in the atom. This first question is pretty straightforward. We can see from the table that the atomic number is always the same as the number of protons. Question 35. How does the electronegativity trend vary among the elements, carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, and fluorine? A. Electronegativity decreases from carbon to fluorine. B. Electronegativity increases from carbon to fluorine. C. Electronegativity remains constant among carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, and fluorine. D. There is no clear trend in electronegativity among carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, and fluorine. The correct answer is B. Electronegativity increases from carbon to fluorine. This is pretty easy. We can see from the graph that the electronegativity values are increasing on this graph as you move from carbon to fluorine. Question 36. Which of the following is true about elements in the same group on the periodic table? A. They have similar atomic masses. B. They have similar electronegativities. C. They have the same number of electrons. D. They have similar chemical properties. The correct answer is D. They have similar chemical properties. Elements in the same group on the periodic table have the same number of valence electrons, which determines their chemical properties. Valence electrons are simply the electrons in the outermost shell or energy level of an atom. For example, elements in group 1, such as lithium, sodium, and potassium, all have one valence electron and are highly reactive with other elements. From these images, you can see that although these elements have different number of electrons, they all have just one electron on the last shell. Please check out ultimateged.com for more lessons on the atomic structure. Question 37. Which of the following subatomic particles are typically found in the nucleus of an atom? Proton. Neutron. Electron. The correct answer is proton and neutron. In the previous question, we used a simple diagram to represent an atom because we only cared about the shells. This diagram here is a better representation of an atom. Both protons and neutrons are typically found in the nucleus of an atom. Protons have a positive charge, while neutrons have no charge, they are neutral. Electrons, on the other hand, are not found in the nucleus but orbit around it in energy levels or shells. Lesson 10. Chemical Bonding, Reactions, and Stoichiometry Question 38. What is the balanced chemical equation for the reaction between hydrogen gas and oxygen gas to form water? A. 2H2 reacts with O2 to get H2O. B. H2O breaks down to 2H2 and O2. C. 2H2 reacts with O2 to give 2H2O. D. 2H2O breaks down to H2 and O2. The correct answer is C. 
Two molecules of hydrogen gas react with one molecule of oxygen gas to produce two molecules of water. Balancing equations is one of the most important things on the GED. Our work here is to make sure that there are equal numbers of atoms of each element on both sides of the equation. On the left side, there are four atoms of hydrogen. That is the two times this two. For the oxygen, there are two atoms. On the right side, please note that this two affect both the hydrogen and oxygen. So there are four atoms of hydrogen, which is this two times this two. And there are two atoms of oxygen because of this two. So we can see that there are the same amount of hydrogen and oxygen on both sides of the equation so it is balanced. Please go to ultimateged.com and try on your hands on more examples. This requires practicing. Question 39. What is the coefficient for the oxygen gas in the balanced chemical equation for the combustion of propane to form carbon dioxide and water? A. 2. B. 3. C. 4. D. 5. The correct answer is D. 5. The work here is to make sure that the number of atoms of oxygen are the same on both sides of the equation. We need to find all the oxygen on the right side and make sure that there are the same number of molecules on the left side. On the right side, oxygen is found in the carbon dioxide and the water. For the carbon dioxide, we have 3 times 2. Remember we said that this 3 multiplies both the carbon and the oxygen. This will give us 6 atoms of oxygen. For the water, we have 4 times 1. This will give us 4. Again, remember the preceding 4 multiplies both the hydrogen and the oxygen. The total number of oxygen atoms is therefore 10. To balance it out, we need 10 atoms of oxygen on the left side. So we can put 5 molecules here. The 5 will multiply the 2 to get 10. Now the molecules of oxygen is the same on both sides so it is balanced. Please. It's important you practice more examples on this. Lesson 11. Thermodynamics and heat transfer. Carla and Mark are chemistry students who are conducting an experiment to study the effects of heat transfer in chemical reactions. They mix two substances together in a beaker and notice that the temperature of the mixture increases. Carla explains that this reaction is exothermic because it releases heat into the surroundings. Mark is curious and asks if there are any reactions that absorb heat. Carla nods and suggests they mix another set of substances to demonstrate an endothermic reaction. They mix the second set of substances together and notice that the temperature of the mixture decreases, confirming that it is endothermic. Question 40. How can you tell if a reaction is exothermic or endothermic? A. By measuring the temperature change of the reaction b. By measuring the weight of the reactants and products. c. By measuring the volume of the reactants and products. d. By measuring the color change of the reaction. The correct answer is a. By measuring the temperature change of the reaction. In the passage, Carla and Mark were able to determine whether a reaction was exothermic or endothermic by observing the temperature change of the mixture. We will end this video here. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe. Check out the full course at ultimateged.com.